Are you looking to play games in 4K and stream up to 1440p? Well, this is the build for you, coming right up. Come, come, come up. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. Today, we're building a gaming and streaming PC in an all black and white themed build. I'm really excited about it because it's the first Ryzen 5000 build for the channel. And I know that despite these being somewhat hard to get parts, a lot of you have been asking me when you're gonna to get to see me do the first Ryzen 5000 build. So today is the day. I'm gonna briefly go through the components, but if you want more detail on my thought process around each one, check out the in-depth part out video I did for this, which I'm gonna put up in the card right there. That's the goal of this channel to mash down all the technical details and give you the best price or performance in your builds. If that's the kind of content you wanna support, remember to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon. It's an absolutely free way for you to get the content that you need and support the channel. Now for the CPU, I originally intended to go with the Ryzen 5800X or even just a 5600X, but I was able to get a 5900X, so I figured, yeah, why not? In addition to providing 12 cores and 24 threads, that's 50% more than the 5800X for only $100 more, this is gonna make an amazing machine for my wife to do all of her high-end video editing. Of course, if you just wanna go on the gaming side, feel free to substitute an Ryzen 5600X instead. Now, for the graphics card, I went with the RTX 3070 and specifically the Gigabyte Gaming Oak C card. You don't need a 3080 or 3090 to play the best games and stream. The 3070 has all the power of a 2080 Ti and more for about a half to even a third of the price. This particular card is one of the better 3070s, but in that regard, I just got a little bit lucky as I had to scramble like everyone else to buy one. If you didn't see my video on how to beat the bots and get some of this new tech, I'm gonna put a link to it in the card above right here. Now for the case, we are going with a black and white themed build. I've always liked the striking looks of the Fractal Design Mesh FI C and I wanted to do a build in it. The case used to sell for around $90 US, but recently it's been on sale at Newegg for only about $70. It comes with two included fans, which is great, along with really good airflow mesh design. This has to be one of the best looking sub $80 cases on the market. For the memory, since we're also using this for a professional level video editing machine, I went with a Team Force Vulcan 64 gigabyte kit with two by 32 gigabyte sticks at 3200 speeds and a cast latency of 16. Now for a streaming build, I definitely recommend 32 gigs at least. And if you're just gaming, 16 gigabytes is perfectly fine. As I talked about in my recent video on the best memory for Ryzen, you don't need super fast memory for just gaming or streaming. So while 3600 CL16 is the sweet spot for smaller kits, it does get a little expensive when buying the larger ones like this, so I went with 3200CL16. For the motherboard, we went with the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Pro AC. It has an absolutely rock solid VRM, tons of USB rear panel connectivity, an ALC1220 audio codec and a really great audio solution, and an incredible amount of fan and RGB headers. It sells from anywhere from $160 to $170 US, and in my opinion, it's one of the best B550 motherboards or motherboards period for Ryzen 5000. So let's go now to the cooler. We've got a Ryzen 5900X. We're probably gonna end up overclocking this. We're definitely gonna be putting quite a bit of load on it when we're gaming and streaming and doing other tasks. We want it absolutely dead silent though. We don't wanna pick up any of that noise. So Scythe, thankfully, was generous enough to send us the Scythe Ninja 5, which is one of their top-end air coolers, it's also dead silent. In addition, they've also sent us six of their K's Flex 120 millimeter RGB fans so we can really illuminate this build. It's gonna look absolutely amazing. We're gonna take out the stock fans that came with the case and we're gonna put six of these things in it. I can't wait to see what it looks like. Of course, you can't do a black and white themed build without black and white cable extensions. So we got this really nice kit from Asia Horse. I'm excited to see what this looks like in the build. For storage, we're gonna go with one terabyte of storage, an M.2 SSD, ADATA, SX8200 Pro. This is a really high speed drive, used to sell for almost $200. Uh, they made some engineering changes to it. It's a little slower than it was, but it's still super fast. And now I was able to pick this up for only $99. 
With that, let's jump into the build. All right, it's all together. Let's run some benchmarks on this. Let's start off with productivity and content creation. Starting out our benchmarks is Cinebench R20, which measures CPU performance for both multi-core and single core. The Ryzen 5900X is an absolute beast of a processor, scoring an amazing 8630 in multi-core, which puts it well above anything other than HEDT parts from Intel. And as you can see, it's 12 cores and 24 threads absolutely crush a lot of other parts with up to two times as many cores and threads. But the Ryzen 5900X isn't going to be outdone in single threaded performance either, scoring an impressive 631 and crushing anything other than the 5950X. For content creation, we're using the Puget Bench for Adobe Premiere Pro, which measures export, playback, and GPU encoding scores. This measures overall system performance in Premiere, and shows off how our CPU, our GPU, and memory are working together. The Ryzen 9 5900X paired with the NVIDIA RTX 3070 and 64 gigabytes of DDR4 3200CL16 memory absolutely demolishes all of these tasks and posts an impressive 911 score overall, besting a number of similar systems with RTX 3080 video cards. Looking at other Puget Bench results for Adobe Premiere, and focusing in on the best offering from Intel ever posted to the site, we can see that our Ryzen 9 5900X with the NVIDIA RTX 3070 demolishes anything that Intel has to offer, even when those offerings are paired with an RTX 3080 or even a 3090. The bottom line is that this is a high-end, professional grade video editing platform for less than $2,000, which is absolutely insane. Of course, this PC isn't just about content creation, it's also about becoming a number one streamer, right? And playing the best games. So let's check out how it played and streamed games in 1080p ultra details. Starting off with our gaming benchmarks is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, what I did to test this both gaming and streaming is I ran it at 1080p ultra settings and on the first several runs, I just ran it uh, normally on the benchmark. And then the second set of runs, I went ahead and enabled OBS and I'm streaming at 1080p 60 frames per second at the same time. Now, what we see in Shadow of the Tomb Raider is that you know, we get 177 FPS, which is pretty amazing at 1080p ultra settings in this game. And when we go ahead and stream it, we do see a little bit of a dip, but not much. 150 FPS on this game is certainly going to be enough to stream easily. You could probably you could probably do several things at the same time. And next up, we've got Fortnite. 
This is a game that I absolutely love to hate because I'm not that great at it, but I'm sure many of you are, and if you are and you want to stream it, this is a fantastic build for it. So we got 210 FPS just playing the game at 1080p ultra details. Of course, when we ratcheted that up and turned on OBS to stream at the same time, we did lose some frames, but we're still down at 171 FPS gaming and streaming simultaneously on the same card. So this, this machine handles it absolutely easily. And of course, if you just want to push super high frame rates, even in 1440p, you can always just turn down the details a little bit and you'll get really, really great performance. Next up is Call of Duty Warzone. Now, because this is a multiplayer game, this is an incredibly hard game to benchmark. So what I've done here is I've just gone ahead and done the training mission in Kars Quarry. That way I can do three drops. I can take roughly the same path each time, engage the same amount of enemies and get some similarity run to run. Overall, we got 177 FPS using just gaming. Incredibly, when I was streaming this thing, I actually got picked up two FPS at 179 FPS. Now this is at ultra details. If you wanted to run a super high refresh rate monitor on this at 1080p or even 1440p, just turn down the details a little bit and this thing would play amazing. All right, really quickly, final impressions. We've seen the benchmarks, we've got the build together. What do I think of it? Well, I'm blown away. Uh, First of all, for a build that costs about $1,800 to get this level of performance, I knew the Ryzen 9 5900X was gonna bring the productivity, absolutely. I was not expecting quite the gaming performance that we got. Now, of course, uh, we, we definitely lucked out. We got an amazing RTX 3070, the Gigabyte Gaming OC card, runs super, super quiet, runs really efficiently, and I was just really, really impressed with the, with the overall performance of it. Aesthetically, love in black and white, love in the cable extensions, and I really like these Case Flex fans. I'm gonna admit, I was not a believer when I took them out of the box. I thought, but they've won me over. And of course, the Scythe Ninja 5, wow. Uh, I'm quite impressed with it. It looks amazing. I was a little worried about the sheer size of it, but look at that thing. It looks really, really great. And I gotta tell you, that it is absolutely dead quiet. You can barely hear it over the case fan. So all in all, I'm super impressed with the build. I hope you enjoyed our very first Ryzen 5000 build for the channel. I'm super excited to use this machine to produce even better content. If you liked the video, remember to absolutely give it a like. And of course, if this is the kind of content you wanna get more of and you wanna support the channel, subscribe and click the bell icon. Free to you, fantastic support for the channel. Thank you so, so much and we'll catch you on the next one.